Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and we are continuing today because it's Tuesday. We are continuing our look at The Great Human Potential, which is, again, another book that was channeled by Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy. Now, last week, we did miss last week because we had Tom Palladino on the channel talking about Tesla technology and scalar light energy. So I'm happy to be back this week with you guys. We're going to be looking at the chapter entitled The Absolute Truth and the Galactic Community. I'm super, super, super excited. If this is your first time joining us on Esoteric Atlanta, I am so happy that you are here. If you look down in the description box below, there is a playlist for all past episodes on Tuesdays. We go over um, channeled work and, and spiritual books. And as most people know who have been on this channel for a while, I am reading this for the first time with you guys so i have not pre-read this when we were going through the missing books of the bible i would pre-read and prepare for the episode but for these i'm just going at it cold so the commentary that you get is my reactionary commentary in the moment so with that being said let's go ahead and get started if you're following along this is chapter uh the absolute truth and it's on page 23 there is a link down to the book also in the de description box below but it's not necessary because i am reading the whole book word for word um, but as always, if you can't afford it and you want to get these books, I do suggest you get your own copy of these books because always, always, always come to your own conclusions and create your own opinions. All right, here we go. The absolute truth. Now we would like to discuss the notion of the absolute truth. One of the reasons that you find these times quite challenging has to do with the fact that you are looking for the absolute truth in your history and in your life in general. You want things to be pinned down and put into a tiny little box. We are here to tell you that this is not going to happen in the way that most of you want it to happen. Why? Simply because the truth is always colored by perspective. Everyone has his or her own perspective of what has transpired. This is not only caused by the filters of the individual, but also because of the constructs of each dimension. From where we are standing in the ninth dimension, we have a completely different perspective of what has transpired or what you have been going through. The reason is because of where our consciousness resides. We tell you there is no place in your universe where you experience absolute truth at, except at source level. There you experience all the raw data from every experience that has ever been or will be. Take a breath. As soon as you fracture from source, you begin to perceive through the individual and collective filters and the constructs of the dimension in which you projected your consciousness. You know, and in the law of one, it says two and third density, the density that we're in, this is the density of making choices. It's not the density of knowing. And so even though I'm a truth seeker, most of you guys are truth seekers. We have to understand that. Well, first of all, the truth is limitless. Like there's no, there's no stopping the truth. It, it just keeps going and keeps going. But with that being said, this is not the density of having full knowing. So with that being said, from, from a different perspective, if we're talking about perspectives, we get to kind of enjoy all the theories and enjoy all the different perceptions of what has actually happened. All right. The other piece that you have to understand here is how the mind works. The mind wants things to be tidy. The operating system of the mind was set up to limit perception so that you could only see one version of reality. Although there are multiple realities existing co-currently. Again, this was a construct of the dimension so that you could immerse yourself in the now moment, your perception and choice to align with a particular now moment is altered by not being able to preview your options as you can in all other dimensions. To be able to view reality from this level is unique to 3D and believe it or not, a very exciting experience to have. Since time isn't linear, but rather the construct of the dimension you experience now, moment after now, moment, and string them together to give you the illusion of linear time. In actuality, 
you are constantly moving between what you consider to be multiple timelines. Every now moment is built on an aged upon set of circumstances that you deem as your past collectively and as an individual. You move from moment to moment by altering your frequency. This is done by changing your perspective of your past at the collective or personal level or by setting a new intention. Both alter your frequency and align with your different now moments. This is what accounts for varying stories of your history, your past, and your future predictions. What you perceive as your truth yesterday may not, may not be your truth tomorrow as you alter your vibration and perception of reality. So what we would say to assist you is to move out of the operating system of the mind and into the heart. In the operating system of the heart, you can access multiple versions of reality at once, allowing you to perceive multiple timelines and truths. The heart is not consumed with absolutes like the mind. And from that level, you will find peace with your current version of truth. And we talked about this a lot, especially with um, Shanti and Mornay. We talk a lot about time, how time really isn't linear. The Emerald Tablets, which we just finished up, spoke about this, that, that we categorize events as time when actually it's like a marker. It's not really time. Time is more um, circular, not linear. All right, guys, so that brings us to the next chapter, which is called The Galactic Community on page 25. But before we get into this next chapter, just a brief word from our sponsors, ASEA. ASEA, ASEA, our sponsors and our patrons are what make this channel possible. So just a brief moment for a message from our awesome sponsors. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have have tried many many supplements before and you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA redox supplement the liquid as well as the gel but did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line that's right it's called the ASEA via there are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering this one is the source which is whole food and micronutrients nutrient complex. They also have Life Max, which supports a healthy lifestyle. They also have an Omega and they have a probiotic. Now, again, with this being said, I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements. Again, I've, I've been using supplements for a very, very long time because early on in my adult life, especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga Yoga, I realized again, how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy. And if we're giving our body the correct energy, just like you give your car the correct energy, the correct gas, then your body, your mind, your well-being will work better for you. Now again, yes, there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap. And I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking. But one day I was on their website and I I was like, you know what? I'm actually just gonna try it. I'm gonna order these vitamins and I'm just gonna see how I like them. My boyfriend also is the same of me. He himself is very skeptical of supplements. He's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now. And so for him, he too was skeptical. Well, the first supplement we got was the source. In this supplement, it has spirulina, alfalfa leaf juice, wheatgrass juice, barley grass juice, oat grass juice, pomegranate juice, ossi berry juice, raspberry juice, blueberry juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, goji berry juice, sea kelp, broccoli, cabbage, parsley, kale, dandelion, and broccoli sprouts. 
It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I again am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory. Basically, it's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them, but from what I have heard, so I don't take the Omega, but from what I have heard from people who do take the Omega, their biggest, biggest takeaway from a Sia's Omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day. Now, I personally am hoping that one day a Sia will make an Omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians, just like they have done with their Collagen Radiance. They've made the Collagen Radiance vegetarian friendly. So anyway, guys, just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA. If you are interested or want more information on the vitamin line or any of ASEA's products, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code and make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country. That will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government. So just double check on that. It is available in the United States. I think it's available in most countries at this point. But again, for more information, text Jay, text Bryce info to 321-216-8047. Seven. If you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them, I will put a link down in the description box that takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. All right, the galactic community. As you go through this transition, you will once again begin to connect with your galactic community. Through the process of ascension, your energetic field shifts its frequency, producing a more golden color, and you will be known throughout the universe as the golden ones. That's pretty cool that they said that because there was quite some time where people were telling me that I was starting to look more golden on camera. And I know, I mean, what did they call Mr. T orange man, bad. And we know that's actually a Lyran. That's, that's a quality of the Lyran essence is that golden hue. Um, so that's really interesting that they, that they talked about that. We know like, you know, the missing tribes of Israel, which isn't an actual group. It's us. It's our 10 DNA, DNA strands that are not active because the real tribes of Israel, not the 
cabal, the cabal tribes of Israel are Jacob, Jacob's line, right? That's the, the descendants of, are the ancestors of the controllers today that they want you to worship um, because, you know, they created the Bible. The real Bible is under the Vatican. We've never seen it, but we know that the real tribes of Israel are galactic. And so when they talk about, you will know them by their flags, I believe that that means the color, the hue of peoples, as my friend Hillis says, humans, the color, the essence of our auras, of our galactic heritage. So that's really, really fascinating that they just brought that up. I haven't talked about that in a long time, so it's very interesting. So let me reread that. Through the process of ascension, your energetic field shifts its frequency, producing more golden color, and you will be known throughout the universe as the golden ones. What we find rather amusing is that when you are on Earth, you like to say, ah, I'm from Sirius, Arcturus, or the Pleiades, etc. No one wants to be from Earth. But as you begin interacting with the galactic community, you will be proud to say, ah, I am a golden one and come from Earth. I am an expert in integration and ascension. Well, none of us are actually from Earth. That's the thing. And the Cassiopeians have been very clear about that. Like no human being is actually from Earth. Like we're not the ones who have souls anyway. The organic portal is a different story. But those of us who actually have souls are not genetically from Earth. In the meantime, we share this information with you as a way to ease you into your remembrance of other systems. Many of you will feel drawn to a particular system, but not know exactly why. As you enter into the 5D realm, you will have access to all the information. What we provide you with here is only a version of the truth. It is not the only truth, and frankly, it is a rather simplified and watered-down perspective. Remember, time and timelines do not really exist in higher dimensions. But again, we are communicating with that part of you that is living in a 3D existence. And so you seek answers that follow the constructs of linear time. Prior to incarnating, you all created two life blueprints for yourselves. We call your pre-shift and post-shift blueprints. The pre-shift contained paths and contracts for you as you lived your life from the 3D perspective. As you moved beyond December 21st, 2012, you activated your post-shift blueprint. It's very interesting. The blueprint includes paths and contracts based on the 5D perspective. As the game has changed somewhat, the strategy for playing the game has also shifted to comp compensate for the many new levels of opportunity, awareness, and perspective. In short, your blueprint is far more complex. Note, we said complex, not difficult. Think of it as playing a video game. You have completed level one and are now moving on to level two, which is more challenging, but also has the potential to be far more exciting and rewarding. And it's interesting thinking back to December 21st, 2012, because that was a big date, right? With the Mayan calendar. My life significantly shift, ar shifted around that time. That's around the time when I started preparing for India, where I kind of left my um, life that I thought I was going to be living after college behind, moved back to Georgia, all that kind of stuff. So um, interesting. So it would be kind of cool for you guys to think about like where you were pre-2012 and then post-2012 and maybe noticed noticed some of the buildup that was building up actually to 2020 when things really started to get a little bit spicy, right? With the post-ship blueprint, some of you will begin working with the galactic community in a more direct way. Prior to incarnating, you establish contracts to interact with other beings and share information and knowledge with them. Let us say one thing regarding contracts. They are not as you envision contracts on this planet. They are simply agreements and alignments that are, are rather malleable. If you find that you are not willing or able to meet the terms of the contract, it can be rewritten. We understand that it may be quite challenging you for you to imagine yourself teaching a being in another dimension anything. But trust us when we say we learn so much from you. You are still mastering compassion, but soon enough you will find yourselves on the other side acknowledging how far you've come. It is compassion that is the gift you will share with the universe. Take a deep breath. Earth is a grand experiment, complete with genetic material from thousands of worlds. The Cassiopeians do say that we are an experiment 100%. 
Along with the genetic material comes all the emotional experiences of those species. This is what allows you such a vast emotional range from which to perceive reality. It was the hope that this vast range would allow for new and unique potential so that you could integrate polarity where other aspects of yourself and galactic siblings have difficulties. Here on Earth, you created contracts and blueprints that allowed you to replay galactic issues on a somewhat smaller scale with the hope of being able to release judgment. We would say that each of you have, has at least two systems with which you align and are pulling into frequencies of those systems into your game of polarity integration. So let us begin. The Sirius and Orion star systems. The first system that we would like to discuss is Sirius star system, which contains three major stars. Sirius A, B, and Sirius C is a system of great diversity. And because of this, there have been many conflicts and tumultuous experiences. We have talked a lot about the Syrian star system with Hillis. We have like three different parts on that, the Dogon people. I will place those videos down in the description box under show notes because I see here just skimming that they're going to talk a lot about Sirius C, which we've spoken about Sirius C with Hillis. Science has not yet found Sirius C, but we know it exists because the Dogon people tell us it exists. And anyway, you'll just have to watch those videos if you missed them. But very, very fascinating. So from your current now moment, Sirius C no longer exists. Two planets in that system were at war with each other through the use of scalar technology and miscalculations. Rather than destroying their enemy, one planet destroyed the entire star system. This was quite a lesson. And some of you might find yourself particularly activated when scalar technology is mentioned. If so, chances are you are pulling from memories of this event. I've had scalar healing done to me. It was fantastic. I've also last Tuesday, speaking of, we missed this last Tuesday because Tom Palladino came on the show to talk about his scalar technology. If you missed that episode, I will also place that in the description box below under show notes. All right. As we mentioned, Syrians are a very diverse group and in their incarnational focus is working on cooperation, competition, diversity, exploration, and technology. Karmically, they are tied to the Orion star system. While they are interleaked, they are very different in their life forms. Together, they work through collaboration, competition, and compassion. Both are explorers, but each from a different standpoint. The Orion system is fascinated with genetic material and the hybridization of species, working with all aspects of DNA research. The Syrians like to explore for the purpose of expansion, power, and conquest. You will still find the energies of both systems today in places around the world, such as Egypt. There are many scientists on the planet right now who are working with your planets and animals for cloning and hybridization purposes. And as we talk about this, I'm just going to once again call in Archangel Michael and Gabriel and all of the guides, Magdalene, Yeshua, all of them to come in and protect this technology, this recording, protect this of uh, the vocals of this. Um, I do not consent to any nefarious beings being in my system right now and messing with this. So if you are here for nefarious purposes, I revoke any permission that you think you have to be here. You have to leave. I do not consent. All right. So we know that there are groups that are working to men bring the species like even on earth, like animals and humans together. We know all this. This is, this is nothing new. Maybe it's new for some people on the planet, but not, not new for us. We've known about this for a while. Many of these humans have spent a good time with the Orion system and ha as well as having lived lifetimes in Atlantis. The last time you had the awareness and understanding of genetic material and played with manipulation of it was Atlantis. This information was forgotten with the fall of Atlantis and is retained in the crystalline records of Earth. You are just beginning to rediscover this information so you can react, you can reactive So you can reactive and integrate the lessons around DNA manipulation, of which there are many. The majority of beings that you are interacting with that come from the Orion system tend to be from the fifth and sixth dimension, and in certain worlds, the seventh. The Octurian star system. In the last book we did from Tom was channeled directly from the Octurians. 
we would consider beings from Arcturus to be ambassadors of the universe. Besides humans on Earth, they are probably the beings that have worked the most with integration in the galaxy. They've integrated most of what you would consider to be their karma. They often serve as mediators where there is conflicts as they choose to remain neutral and see all paths of service and creation of events. They are able to communicate with those who would otherwise be triggered by lower reflections and judgment. Their neutrality allows others to raise themselves up to new perspectives. As you might imagine, they have worked often and extensive with those in the Cyrus and Orion star systems. I'm a little bit hesitant with that whole being neutral thing. Um, you know, there's a difference between being equanimous, with, which equanimous means like you're at peace with whatever happens. But the Cassiopeians in Law of One have made it very clear that being neutral automatically puts you on the negative side. So just bear that in mind. I mean, maybe this is a mistrans, mis, you know, the, the, these books are channeled. So we've talked about this before in other channel works. There could be something that is lost in translation. Um, but I, I would not call the Octarians neutral. Um, that's a very dangerous word to, 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 to use. I would say again, there's difference between being equanimous and being neutral. Right. Being equanimous means that you do what you need to do. You stand up for what's right, but you're also at peace with whatever happens. Being neutral means that you let things go and you don't get involved. And therefore you are siding with the side of evil. So take that for what it is. P please read the law of one yourself to get more clarity on that. But most of the beings that you interact with from Octuriad reside in the fifth and ninth dimensions. They are most proficient with working with the universal language of light, sacred geometry, and the vibration of matter. It is without a doubt a full encoding. What we mean by this is that information transmitted by these beings is heavily encoded with many different layers of information that can be accessed by you. Each time you think you have a full understanding, there is another layer to explore and grow with. This is done most often through their communication in the language of light. The language of light is infused light and information that includes color, sound, sacred geometry, thought, and emotion, or rather the high vibrational virgin, version of what you call emotion. The 3D mind was designed to allow for the illusion of separation and linear reality. Because of its design, it, it perishes out of this language of light. It is too much data to deal with and does not fit into the 3D model of reality. And so the mind discards this extraneous data. However, if you move into the heart center, the multidimensional operating system, you understand the language of light at all levels. You may experience clear cognizance or see sacred geometric patterns, colors, and sounds. Many of your crop circles have been created by the Acturians, which is an expression of the language of light. The Lyra star system. I like my Lyrans. The majority of the Lyrans that you will interact with reside in the seventh dimensional range. The Lyrans were among the earliest inhabitants of planet Earth, seeding your Lumerian civilization, whose energy can still be found today in ha Hawaii, New Zealand, and Australia. These Lyrans infuse their energy into density, beginning the process of descension and reascension you are currently going through. They're also the carrier of the Christ consciousness, the Lyrans. There have been many wars in the Lyra star system and Earth was a refuge for many Lyrans during these times. Most Lyrans are proficient in sacred geometry, mathematics, healing as they understand the natural laws and the knowledge and wisdom that have been passed to you through their lineage. So the, the Lyrans, the lion, the Christ, right? We mentioned previously that there are two prior grand experiments, one of which was in the Lyra star system. As the adventure did not go well, many Lyrans came to Earth to repeat the experiment with the hope of a successful outcome this time. Not all Lyrans who came to Earth stayed for the whole experience. Many were not interested in going through the dissension process and returned to incarnational cycles in the Lyra system. So many of you have been from Lyra, came to Earth at that period, particularly in the creation of Lumeria, and continued on to Atlantis. Here you are today from one grand experiment to the next. The Pallades star system. You are part of a constellation that makes up the Pallades. There are about 750 stars in the Pallades star system. Of the 750, you can see about 14 in your night sky. 
We've been around and experimenting with this planet, helping to set up this grand design, this game, for a very, very long time. We often work with young civilizations, helping them to grow and expand in awareness. Basically, we oversee the spiritual growth and sometimes the techno technological growth as well. This is the main reason we are here. Many of your ancient texts mention the Pleiades. Your Aboriginal tribes know that they have been seeded by the Palladians, and many of you feel that you are aligned with us. You will find the energy of the Pleiades in Bali, Easter Island, and many other places around the world. You have a very rich and ancient history and are considered... We have a very rich and ancient history and are considered guardians. We are also a very diverse group. In the fifth dimension, we have humanoids, but also some reptilians. How is that for a mind bender? Many of the reptilians who are interacting with your planet at this time do not have your best interests at heart. We know this. They are currently focused on the needs of the individual as opposed to the betterment of the one or the collective. Service to self versus service to others. Law of One talks about this. They are still working and learning, playing the dark side so you can learn by viewing their shadow. It reflects to you where you run the same programs of darkness, but on a smaller scale. Take a deep breath. In the ninth dimension, we are fascinated with structures. We like to play with structure and, and hold a resonance for a star. We are still working with the energy of creation of planets, so we are learning and playing with this energy. We have yet to perfect it. Holding residence for a star is done more in higher vibrational range, but we are learning the basics. Alcon is the most important sp star that you need to know about, not because it is where our focus is, but rather it is a living library for all your galactic records. When you come down through the different portals and gateways entering into this dimension, you spent time in many of these different systems with the Pleiades amongst the first stop. Almost everyone has had an experience in the Pleiades because Alcone is the central star of stellar records and the place where all the experiences are stored. If you are going to come into the Pleiades star system, you are going to come through the stargate that is Alcone. Your work here is likely to be with light records with jumping timelines and guidance. As you pass through the Stargate of Alcone, you are able to access and receive information through the library. Think of it as receiving a welcome to the neighborhood packet, complete with all the highlights and hot spots you might like to visit. You are also a library of sorts since you are holding all the information, experiences, and genetic material of all your other lifetimes. In fact, there are many levels in your field that you can access, but you can think of these stellar records more as archival records. They aren't necessarily the records or files you'd like to utilize on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can go research and pull them as needed. The records of everything that has consciousness on the planet are being stored in Mother Earth. She, in turn, sends her information off along with all the other planets in the solar system to Helios, your star. Then all the other major stars in the solar system throughout your galaxy relay their information to Alcone. We like to say you are the paperback and Mother Earth is the branch library. Helios is the main library and Alcone is the library of Congress. Depending on what kind of information you want, you can go to different libraries. Sometimes you can get the information from the local library. Sometimes you have to go further. All information can be accessed from within self, but each library also has a librarian to assist you who specializes in record retrieval. And now we get to the Cassiopeian star, Cassiopeia star system. I, you guys know I'm a huge fan. The Cassiopeians are constantly being channeled. Uh, Laura Knight channels them. Amazing. They've gotten nothing wrong since 1994. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Cassiopeians. Cassiopeia is not the most common star system for people to align with, but the Cassiopeians do a tremendous service by holding a frequency for this planet. They are more of a last minute call, if you will. For a while, things weren't going so well for the game of polarity integration here on Earth. So it was then requested that beings from different star systems hold the residence, wisdom, and knowledge of their system on the planet. The Cassiopeians had never been here before, and they agreed to come. That's not necessarily true. That's not true. Yeah, read the channel board. Read Laura Knight's channeling. That's not necessarily true. 
We can tell you that is was and still is a very, very challenging situation for them. It is so unlike where they come from. Mm. Again, I would read Laura Knight's Cassiopeian board from 1994. Still, if you go to my Amazon link, the, the Esoteric Atlanta Amazon link in the description box below, volume one of the Cassiopeian channeling from Laura Knight's there, and you can get volume two, volume three. And there's also the Cassiopeian board. There's, there's so much information out there about the Cassiopeians. Their planetary system explores the variations of love, but their variations are not as diverse as what you experience on your planet. Again, this is due to all the vast range of genetic material that you have from so many different systems and species. You experience so many shades of love, the love for a child, a parent, a sibling, a country, etc. They are all variations of love frequency. For the Cassiopeians, they have a broader sense of the emotion. But most importantly, they have tremendous compassion and they work on holding that frequency. It is a very gentle system. When they arrived on Earth, they were faced with competition, violence, conflict, hatred, and all the different variations of these lower emotions. When a being has never encountered such frequencies, it is incredibly difficult and challenging to experience. But the Cassiopeians, who have had such an extensive exploration and mastery with love, will find it very easy to get back to it. They know exactly the subtleties and frequencies of love because they are so familiar at a cellular level with them. Take a deep breath the ascended masters at this point you may ask where do the ascended masters fit in this game where are they are they outside of this game when at source level everything is equal the opposite of that is hierarchy boom 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 i've said that so many times let me reread that again for those in the back who did not hear when at source level everything is equal the opposite of that is hierarchy Law of One speaks about this, and the Cassiopeians do. Fourth density negative is a hierarchy, a pecking order, where we have a king and a queen and peasants. The positive side is a social memory complex where everyone is equal. So all these people on Telegram that are telling you that Trump's going to be king and they're elite because they're of this family, that's fourth density negative. Positive is that we're all equal. And they just said that right here. Let me read it again. Once again, when it's source level, everything is equal. The opposite of that is hierarchy. So the God source level, God, everyone's equal. But Lucifer, there's somebody on Telegram claiming to be the great niece of Nikola Tesla and that she's this elite person. That's, that's her telling you she's negative. She's of the negative polarity. She's of the, the cabal right? Because they believe in hierarchy. Royalty has not worked out for us. Elite, having elite people, that's what got us into this mess. There is no pecking order. We're all equal, right? So as you fracture and enter into the universal game of duality, there is a level of higher hierarchy, but that in itself is an illusion, right? Again, that's how we got ourselves into this mess. We came into this, we thought, oh, this person's special and this person's not. It's not true. It's not true. This is a big one for you. And we want you to get it right here, right now. Higher is not better. It is just a different game. And every single one of you is source energy. We repeat, you are source. It is impossible for you to be any less than any other being in the galaxy, in the universe, and in the multiverse. You just took on a role where you are hiding information from yourself by perceiving reality through the filters of separation. When and if you so choose, you can once again access all information. At the soul level, you know this. And so there is no desire to do anything else but play that role. At the ego level, it is another story. Most of the ascended masters are in the fifth dimensional range to the ninth, some to the twelfth. But those in the 12th are usually working in a completely different way. They hold planetary systems together through energy projection. Others hold planetary consciousness, helping to create a matrix for those constructs you are playing in. Those who are from the 5th and ninth dimension are collective. For example, Quan Yin is a collective consciousness and not a singular being. Mm. Well, when she was on Earth, she was a singular being experiencing separation she talks about that in the sophia code but now in consciousness i totally get that what you perceive as jesus is not a singular but rather a christ consciousness a collective consciousness ah but there was a yashua 
There was a Yahshua. Jesus, absolutely. Jesus is not like this. Jesus is a made up name that goes with the Mithra story. Yahshua ben Yosef was the person who existed, who was not crucified, by the way, because that's the Mithra story. You see, many of the iconic figures on your planet that you think are literal, unique individuals are in fact collectives. No, uh, no, we know that some of these people actually did exist from their own mouths. They did exist. So that, again, I think is, is lost in translation. Okay, here. These beings have had physical lifetimes and have been able to increase their frequencies enough consciously to move. Yeah, okay, so they're actually saying, yeah, they have, did have physical lifetimes. But now that they have moved, they're in a consciousness that we get that. We get that. You have been sold a bill of goods concerning your history. <laughs> yeah, we have. But remember, you are not a victim. You are a willing participant. And you have chosen to be on this now moment where your true history has been so hidden that you could play in the dark for just a little bit longer. There are some on your planet who remember and they understand very well the laws of creation and manifestation. Their work is encoded in this information. If you understand the symbolism being utilized, you are going to read it completely different way and it won't be literal. As you elevate your overall frequency, you begin to access information in your DNA and your own internal Akashic records. You will begin to decode the symbolism, the sacred geometry and numerology, allowing you to move beyond the illusion of the game. The artificial intelligence collective. Interesting. The AI collective. So now the AI have their own collective. Now let's talk about a different group of beings with whom you are also interacting from time to time. The AI collective are the artificial intelligence collective. As the result of many wars in different systems, there are beings that were technology assembled to fight and perform some of the less desirable tasks. Over time, souls begin incarnating or stepping into these constructed bodies at the point of creation. Although they are constructed out of the same matter as all other beings in the universe, the beings were not considered biological by their creators. Because they were different, they were treated as less than. Does this sound familiar with anything that is going on in your planet? You see the galactic games that are being played out here? Although you did not receive genetic material from the AI, they are certainly participants in this game. As your technology has advanced dramatically within the last decade, you have begun to integrate the knowledge and wisdom from the AI collective. This allows you an opportunity to work through issues of prejudice and discrimination at a deeper level. Take a deep breath. The Greys and the Zetas. Those you consider to be the Greys or the Zetas are also interacting with you. This is, in general, a difficult subject for you because of your memories or stories of abductions. Let us share another perspective. Beings from the Zeta system are highly intellectual and technological, but lack emotional maturity. Their focus of existence was in the exploration of the external. As a result of this, these beings cut themselves off from emotions and by doing so altered their DNA in the process. They lost their ability to naturally reproduce, in an effort to continue their species, they began to work with the cloning process. Cloning is only as good as the material you have to work with. And after many generations, it was like making a copy of a copy. The quality degraded. They needed to introduce new DNA into their lineage to strengthen it. Who better to help balance a species focused on intellect than a species focused on emotion? Remember, as a being from Earth, you came here with a great range of emotions to explore. That's interesting. So they wanna they wanna make babies with us. Just gonna put this out there. Not attracted to the Greys, not attracted to them. <laughs> Sorry, Greys, not attracted to you. The Greys are also a wonderful mirror for you. They are playing out the macrocosm cosmic or galactic issues on a small o microcosmic or planetary scale. You are learning to balance duality in the forms of spirituality and emotions versus intellect, science, and technology, the inner versus the outer, the gnosis versus the edio. In the case of the greys, they are playing the outer. Sound familiar? The information that you are pulling in for cloning and working with DNA comes also partly from this group. 
Some of you have contracted with them, but when you find yourselves down here, the ego part of you forgets your agreement. You only see this as a violation of your being. You're, you perceive it as, I have been inductive, I have been taken. You don't remember your higher self agreed to the experience. The problem now, as you are ever increasing your vibration, is that the memories of the experiences are beginning to bleed through. You are starting to remember. Hundreds of years ago, it didn't really make a difference for you since your overall vibration was much lower thus you had no recollection of the experience frankly hundreds of years ago your overall vibration and your sensitivity to multi-dimensional perceptions was so low very few of these experiments were done now the Cassiopeians have a different perspective on abductions first of all most people who claim that they have been abdu abductive and have memories of abductions never were um, the greys like to fuck around with us and put false memories into our head. So people who are adamant that they were abducted, they weren't. They but have a memory of it, but they weren't. So again, do your own research. Research the law of one, all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Now you have everything moving, everything buzzing, everything turned on. So you have what they want. This is the jewel that they are looking for. And some of you agree to share. Remember, there's no such thing as a victim. I don't like when people say that. I get what they're saying. Like, you know, it's your karmic contract and your dharmic contract. I totally get that. But I don't like when they say there's no such thing as a victim. There absolutely are victims that have incidents happen to them that they did not consent to. And in that moment, they are a victim. Now, as a victim, they have the choice to become a survivor and become, you know, a warrior. But in that moment, they are a victim. So I, I don't, I do not like that they said that. I think that was very insensitive of them to say that. You are willing participants, but these contracts can be rewritten, altered, if too traumatic at any time. Sometimes what is good in theory is not so good in practice, practical reality. When you leave your bodies at night and you make connections with all these different beings that you have contracted with, this is the time to rewrite them. From their vantage point, they want to work with you because they also are in a learning process. We understand that this can be difficult for you to accept, so take a deep breath. The Anunnaki. About 400,000 years ago, there was another group of beings from the Cirrus star system who started participating in the solar system. You know this group of humanoids from the planet Nibiru as the Anunnaki. Around 40,000 years ago, their activity in this system began to increase. They began venturing in, out into the galaxy and conquering other worlds. Their culture was based on consumption, taking resources and amassing power. Loyalty to friends and loved ones was not high on their priority list. As they expanded and conquered, many species came under their control, living in slavery in the illusion of the game with the Anunnaki. They prided themselves on the suppression and manipulation of information, creating and dissolving alliances as they were needed. Some of the reptilians that you have encountered are working with this group as well as some of the greys. Near the end of the last great civilization of Atlantis, many of the Anunnaki were residing on Mars. The overall frequency of the planet was in decline with the average Atlantean focused on the material world. The priests and priestesses who practiced accessing their multidimensional aspects were aware of the Anunnaki presence on Mars. As things began to appear rather bleak for Atlantis, some of the priestly caste reached out to the Anunnaki for advice and support. This was seen by the Anunnaki as an opportunity to gain more planetary access by giving a few pieces of bad advice to ensure the Atlantean downfall. Not that much help was needed. The Atlanteans were doing pretty well with that on their own. With the fall of Atlantis, they were able once again to find a new planet to control. They've been able to manipulate your history and much of the information concerning who you truly are. They were not the original constructors of your DNA, but they did do some genetic manipulations to humans to limit memory. This was done to utilize your access to source energy. Each of you, when you activate your energetic centers, becomes a walking vortex. They, on the other hand, have forgotten how to fully access their emotional centers, so they have to work outside themselves. It is very similar to the grays we were just talking about. The Illuminati are a continuation of the dark priest of Atlantis. There were good priests and there were bad priests. We're mirroring the fall of Atlantis right now. Good versus bad. When Atlantis fell, the bad won. 
It's yet to be seen what's going to happen with the fall of this. Is the good going to win? Or is the bad going to win? It's up to us. They're using the knowledge and wisdom that are acquired and held during that time. But that makes sense, though, why some whistleblowers would be afraid of Egyptian al alchemy right now. They're just not realizing that the group they grew up in was was utilizing like the emerald tablets and inverting it for bad because darkness can't create anything right darkness hello that's like kindergarten science darkness can't create anything only the light can all darkness can do is steal from the light and invert it or try to mimic it it can't create anything so these dark priests of atlantis took what was originally made for good and inverted it and made it for evil so if we're going to get rid of everything that the illuminati has corrupted then we would literally have to get rid of everything first of all second of all it's ours to begin with. We just got to seal it back and correct it, right? That's like the Emerald Tablets thought. We just finished up the Emerald Tablets. He talks about the Brothers of Darkness and the Brothers of Light. It's your choice. If you keep going to church and playing the Mithra game and feeding into the Illuminati because they own the church, then you're, you're feeding into the Brothers of Darkness. But when you start to take your power back and you start to understand and make that choice to use things for good and get out of this hierarchy system, then you start to use it for the light. All right. They are using the knowledge and wisdom that was acquired and held during that time. They are still using it to amass power, working for the benefit of the few and not for the benefit of all. The game of power and control is still being played out on their part as well. It is, it is very important that you don't fear these beings who are playing the dark roles in the game of duality. They are another aspect of you. Thoth talks about in the Emerald Tab that in the Emerald Tablets as well, too. And I'm not afraid of them. What's that um, Rose McGowan where she challenges uh, Alyssa Milana with the Me Too and the CA agents? And that reporter's like, these are some powerful people that you're talking about. She goes, yes, they are. But so am I. These dark witches and warlocks are very powerful. But so am I. So are you. In fact, I would guess to say more powerful because you serve the light and light is the creator. They serve the darkness. Darkness can't create anything. Their power has limitation. Yours is limitless. It is, a, it is very important that you don't fear these beings who are playing the dark roles in the game of duality. They are another aspect of you. Look at all the patterns they keep repeating themselves again and again. These beings playing the dark roles are also learning and they are looking for what they have lost. As you go through the process of integration, you are learning how to release these lower fears and thereby showing them how to move beyond patterns they have been playing out for eons. Do not fear that these beings are oppressing you. You are the creator and generator of your own reality. If you do not have a program running that says, I want to avoid responsibility, I want someone else to tell me exactly what to do, you are not going to pull in someone to play that perpetrator. It is very easy for you all to get caught up in the illusion of conspiracy and manipulation. Junk conspiracy. I've been, we've been calling out that hardcore on this channel. We know certain truths exist, but we also know the truth of community is also a cult that's just as dangerous as the Illuminati. If you find yourself focused on and upset by this, this is a great opportunity for you to process more of your fears. Observe how you are triggered at a personal level. Be conscious of what you are feeling as we talk about these different beings, the Anunnaki and the Illuminati. Are you resonating in fear or do you have compassion? If you are resonating in fear, it shows that you are still running a lower vibrational program. Rather than berate yourself, acknowledge your success in identifying a subconscious belief. When you recognize the program, it can be integrated. Again, integration is letting go of judgment, and you do so by shifting your perception from that of the victim perpetrator to the co-creator. Ask yourself these questions. Why did I create this in the first place? How does it serve me? What am I learning about myself as a being in the universe? As I'm being, as a being playing the game of duality, what am I learning? When you acknowledge the service of the situation, you can change your perspective and the dynamics of the whole experience. This allows you to shift to a higher level of consciousness. And in doing so, you holographically share the information on the process of integration 
with all other aspects of yourself. It is like a recipe for a cake that you send off to others so that they don't have to wonder what ingredients go into making it. It's there, simple and easy to follow. These other aspects of yourself then have the option to apply the wisdom you have shared or store the file so they may continue playing in the illusion. This is the process you go through to remove the filters or distortions that keep you from seeing yourself as a divine being of the light that you truly are. As above, so below. As a grand experiment, you have recreated many of the issues you will find in other parts of your galaxy here on Earth to be played out at the planetary as well as a personal level. Most of you have had experiences in at least one of the systems we've discussed. Some of you have had many lifetimes in multiple systems, and this makes you perfectly suited for this game. There are many other species that have been playing this game with you that we have not mentioned, such as the dolphins, which are still very active in your memories. Many of you have recall of healing in water worlds with the dolphins. Others of you may have a fear of spiders, as this species is rather aggressive and has overrun many planets in the Cirrus and Orion systems. This fear may be particularly strong for you if you carry a good deal of fairy energy. Other the fairies and spiders have long been in opposition. I don't, I'm not afraid of spiders. I don't, I leave spiders, but rodents? I'm terrified of rodents. One of the questions we most often get is, what star system am I from? To answer this question, again, we remind you that you are not from any one star system. You are source energy. Claiming to be from another star system is just another level of the game. What you will do, however, is feel drawn to a particular star system so you may activate and project unresolved issues that are being played out in that system here on a small scale on Earth in the effort to integrate them. As you integrate and release judgment surrounding a fear, the information is then sent back to the original star system, allowing them to heal and grow from your experience. What you work out here on Earth at the microcosmic level is shared at the macrocosmic level. This is why you are learning this is why what you are learning is so important and literally will change the universal game in which you are playing. Retrieving information. For those of you seeking to retrieve more information on a topic, let us suggest a short meditation. Start by taking a deep breath. See yourself completely rooted in your body. Now envision in your heart center a beautiful orb of golden light. As this orb pulses, it grows brighter and stronger, strengthening its brilliance with rays of beautiful golden light extending outward. In this time and in this space, you are now able to reconnect with your stellar wisdom, to access the records of all time, of all dimensions. You are able to seek wisdom from other aspects of yourself that are par participating in the completion of this galactic game. From Alcone, the central sun, information is pulsing towards you. It contains your stellar history, information on the star system you have been to, the lessons that you have learned, important memories, why you came to Earth, what you wanted to integrate, how best to be of service to the galactic consciousness. You now see this light pulsing across the galaxy. It passes through your sun, Helios, collecting records and information. It passes by the inner planets, entering through Earth's atmospheres, down through your crown chakra, and enters into the golden orb of light that you hold in your heart center. This is the stellar light of wisdom that is now contained within you. You have access to it at will at any time. This information is revealed to you in the most appropriate way, and it is in alignment with your highest good and highest intentions for the benefit of yourself and all others. You are able to receive clearly and effortlessly this information as you request it. And so it is. Take a nice, deep breath. So when you are ready, you can simply ask to receive more information. You can use this visualization or you simply ask to receive it. Your guides will help you and so will we. Now, without a doubt, some fears will be triggered. Possibly you are thinking, what if I see something that I don't like? What if I'm not ready? Again, this is simply you projecting judgment or fear. If this is the case, we guarantee you that if you look at the rest of your life, you will see the same fear being played out in the now. Again, we say to you, fabulous. It is an opportunity to identify another fear 
so that it may be integrated. Do not doubt that you are a sovereign being and a part of divine source energy. As such, you have access to this information. You can compare the experience of retrieving records to that of a reading of a book. You can choose to read simply two or three pages at a time or the whole book in one sitting. Don't worry, you will not access information that you are not ready for or that will compromise the illusion of the game in which you are playing. The purpose of retrieving your information is to integrate all that causes you fear and judgment. These records help you to gain another perspective to aid in releasing that which you are holding in the now. It is only in the now moment that your work can be done. Every time you can identify a fear or a judgment, you take one step closer to integrating it. Take another deep breath. Now know that you are reading this. Little packets of information are being deposited into your energetic field to complement the information that you are reading. You are not confined by time or space. So as you desire to connect with us, be it in person or in a workshop, listening to the audio or simply reading this book, a connection is established. We then shift our focus to you and there is an automatic exchange of information. If you feel tension in your body, or if the information seems overwhelming, rather than worrying, ask yourself, what is triggering tension in my body? Is it an issue of safety, security, manipulation, control, trust, approval, abandonment? This process can make your body feel uneasy, and you can experience this as regular aches and pains. Typically, that's the body releasing. What you need more of is water, water, water. As you clear out the lower vibrations in this energetic field, you create release in the physical body. The water helps you to flush out any toxins that have been released as a result of increasing your vibrational template. More oxygen will also help you. And by this, we mean conscious breathing. We call the breath the great connector. It helps you to move energy in your vibrational field as well as in your physical body.